meeting to order. It's February 7th at 7 p.m. This is the first regular city commission meeting for the city of Ormond Beach, and uh, we are in commission chambers. I hope you felt welcomed as you came in this evening by our leisure services director, Robert Carolyn, and information systems manager, Chuck Osteen. They served as our greeters this evening. Um, and then while I'm introducing everybody, if anybody needs to speak either during public comment or on an agenda item, you can fill out a card and take it over to our uh, recording secretary. And if you look to my far right, uh, your far left, you'll see our recording secretary, Taylor Lockhart. Next to her is our city clerk, Susan Dotteris. Uh, missing from our lineup tonight is Commissioner Lori Tolland, and she sent a message earlier saying, just letting you know that I'm very sorry, but I won't be able to make the meeting tonight. I'm the on-call grandma for our newest grandchild born this morning in Melbourne. Everyone is healthy and baby is beautiful. Uh, I apologize for not being there, but congratulations to the Tolland family on a, on a beautiful grandchild. And uh, we're very, very happy for her and we'll miss her, but we understand, so. Uh, and then next we have Commissioner Sargent. Good zone evening, two. everybody. To my left and your right is Commissioner Persis, Zone 3. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Next is Commissioner and Deputy Mayor Harold Briley, Zone 4. Good evening, everyone. Next to Commissioner Briley is our City Manager, Joyce Shanahan. Next to her is Assistant City Manager, Claire Whitley. Then we have City Attorney Randy Hayes, uh, and then way over there to the left, way over to your right, is our Police Chief, Jesse Godfrey, and our Fire Chief, Howard Bailey. At this time, if you would, please uh, silence your cell phones and rise for the invocation given by Pastor Scott Smith from First United Methodist Church here in Ormond Beach, and that will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so as we get ready to start before we open the meeting, I've been asked uh, that we come today uh, with an extra moment uh, to remember Ethan Wilson, a faithful servant who dedicated his life uh, to serving this community as a firefighter and paramedic here in Ormond Beach. Uh, his compassion, bravery, and commitment to helping others will not be forgotten, especially by his fire family at the Ormond Beach Fire Department. His loss is deeply felt by all who knew him. So I ask that you remember uh, and comfort his loved ones and the firefighters during this difficult time and grant them peace and strength. Uh, may Ethan's memory continue to inspire us to live a life of service and gratitude just as he did. So we lift up our hearts and gratitude for his life and the love he shared with everyone. And let's take a moment in silence to remember and then I'll lead us in a prayer. God, we give, you thank you. we give you thanks for the life in which you give us. And in moments like these, we remember that life can be fleeting. You know our needs even before we ask them. And there are times, God, we don't know what to say in prayers. So we ask your spirit intercede on our behalf. Grant us your grace that as we shrink before the mystery of death, that we might see the light of eternity. And speak to us once more your message of life and death and help us to live as those who are prepared to die. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those who are dear to us that we name in our hearts before you now. Especially today, Lord, we praise you for Ethan Wilson, whom you have welcomed into your presence. To all of these, Lord, grant your peace. Let your perpetual light shine upon them. And help us so to believe where we have not seen that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last together again with them in the joy. One of joy in your home, not made with hands, but one eternal in the heavens. Amen. Amen. So, Mayor, it seems fitting to add a second prayer to bless this gathering. Let's pray. Creator God, I give you thanks for this day and all days that are a blessing from you. I give you thanks for the beautiful city of Ormond Beach and ask that those who govern and lead us do so with a heart that seeks equality and justice for all. I pray for leaders who will put aside their desires and seek the good for all. 
give you thanks for the dedicated folks who serve this community in so many ways. We especially lift up our police, fire, and all first responders who at times put themselves in harm's way that we might be safe. More than anything, God, bless us and keep us and help us to be the people you have called us to be. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Just to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. At this time, uh, we will hear from those of you who have signed a card to speak about any item which is not on the printed agenda for this meeting. The City Commission has adopted a three-minute time limit for each speaker. Audience comments will conclude in 30 minutes should we need to go past that time uh, and can be carried on later at the end of the meeting should we have any carryovers. Uh, as I stated before, if you've already completed a sign-up card, uh, great. If you need to, please see Taylor and she'll make sure you get one. Uh, first up is Debbie Cruck Forrester. Warm and strong. Good evening. My name is Debbie Cruck Forrester. I'm a military spouse and commander of Warm and Strong. For those of you who are not familiar with Warm and Strong, we're a 501c3. I founded in 2015 when my husband, Sergeant First Class Tim Forrester, deployed along with 200 comrades from the then uh, Daytona Beach Base, first the 265th ADA for a one-year mission to Afghanistan. His uh, previous deployment took uh, place in 2011, um, two weeks after we got married. It was also for a year, and it wasn't a pleasant experience. That's why the next deployment I started on and Strong. I went Strong met every morning at 7.30 at Ike's Bait and Tackle Shop. Uh, we kept a vigil morning bridge walk, commenced March 29, 2015, which is Vietnam Veterans Day. For over 367 consecutive days, Vietnam veterans, first responders, their family members, and patriots in our community walked together as a team carrying American flags, service flags, and the retired veterans wore their caps. A year later, when all 200 returned home safe, um, over 1,000 members of our community were present at the Daytona Beach Airport to welcome them home. First in line to greet them were the first uh, the Vietnam veterans who gave them welcome home that they did not de receive but deserved. Next month will mark eight years of our Ormond Strong um, bridge walks. Believe it or not, we still keep up the walks. Um, we're older, slower, some have passed away. But our passion and enthusiasm for our military veterans and our first responders has never wavered. In addition to the bridge walk, our group hosts and assists with a multitude of events. Um, over the past eight years, I'm here to invite you, the council, and the community to our sixth annual J.J. Martin Military Veteran First Responder and Community Family Appreciation Day taking place Saturday, February 25th at Rockefeller Gardens in Norman Beach from noon to four. Uh, the Travel in Vietnam Veterans Wall will be included. It will be escorted into Rockefeller Gardens at 8 a.m. We're encouraging citizens to have flags um, at the entrance in honor of the over 58,000 um, men and women killed in action during Vietnam, including 45 from Volusia County. The opening ceremony includes a parade, um, pipes and drums, uh, raising of the flag, and a, we have all kinds of entertainment going on at the Fred Costello Amphitheater we're going to honor all the military veterans and first responders. In closing, I'd like to thank you, our great city, for supporting, constant support for military veterans and first responders. To each of you who have served or are still serving, or um, family members that have sought in this room, I leave you with this. On behalf of the grateful nation, thank you. On behalf of our veterans, we salute you. And from my heart, I love you. Ormond Strong out. Thank you, and I'm um, just putting that into my calendar. Debbie, we appreciate all that Warm and Strong does, and uh, thank you for your service as well. Next up is Ellen Orfinger. Good 
Good evening, Mayor Partington, City Commissioners, City Managers Shanahan and Chief Godfrey. My name is Ellen Orfinger and I have lived at 1527 Oak Forest Drive for 34 years. In the lobby of the Ormond Beach Police Department, there is a banner that reads, See something, say something. I saw something. I said something, but have gotten no response until today when Captain Reese reached out to me and assured me the police department is looking into this matter. I am here this evening to speak about two young men that have been driving illegal mini bikes without a driver's license throughout Ormond Beach neighborhoods for months. They have been seen racing, speeding, running stop signs, driving at night with no lights or reflectors. These young men have come close to injuring people. It hasn't happened yet, but someone is going to get killed or seriously injured if they aren't stopped. Their actions scare me. They should scare you. I posted about this issue on the Nextdoor app and within three days had numerous responses. Here are a few of the comments. Doug, this weekend I witnessed boys racing south on Old Ridgewood Avenue. They blew through a stop sign at Wilmette. Joe, I filed a police report. I constantly see these two Seabreeze High School boys speeding and being reckless from Granada to the high school. Alan, they are constantly flying up and down North Ridgewood Avenue. Lisa, I saw them this morning. I hope something is done soon. Cindy, they were screaming down Parkside a number of times this weekend and riding at night with no lights or reflectors. They almost hit several people walking. Joanne, I saw them breeze right through a stop sign at Hernandez and North Ridgewood last week. The list goes on. Neighbors have also reached out to me privately and in person. All have witnessed these kids driving out of control with no respect for the law or care for anyone. Their parents are aware of their activities and do nothing. The police told me that they know who they are, where they live, and that they are breaking the law. They have been fined over $500, $500 plus, but the problems continue. More effective police action is needed to take care of this problem. This needs to be taken seriously. The kids are aware they're being watched and are driving less and covering their faces. They won't stay quiet long. To date, I have not gotten the response I had hoped for with the information I have shared with city personnel and those in charge. These boys are breaking many laws and doing so at a high rate of speed and in a reckless manner. It's time to do something before it's too late and someone suffers. See something, say something, do something. Thank you for listening to my concerns. Thank you. Charlie Wilkes. Good evening. I'm Charlie Wilkes, 67 Hernandez Avenue. In the 1960s, there were some off-beach parking put in at, um, at um, Hampstead and Stanish approaches to the north and Harvard approach to the south. These were new areas at the time to our city. Previously undeveloped areas, actually. So they were keeping up with growth when they put these in. And I always thought the, the people that put these in had amazing foresight. Think what a mess it would be right now if we didn't have it. So I'm here tonight to encourage you all to be inspired by this amazing foresight at the time. We need off-beach parking. If you don't know that, you need to get down to the beach and check it out. You don't need to actually go to the beach. Just go look for a parking place and you'll see what I'm talking about. I know land is expensive and we lose tax revenue, but that's just part of growth. So we, need, we, we just need to keep with it. And uh, off-beach parking is just part of the infrastructure of a coastal city. Very important part. You need to work with the county and be ready. Don't miss, don't, don't miss opportunities because there'll be some out there. Small sites are fine. We don't need another Romano Park. We just need something like a Seminole or a Standish approach. Start with just one. I mean, it, I, and I have, I have 
I, I have faith in this city commission that they can do it and be a role model for the future ones. There are also things that the, the city can do to um, help out beach goers protect the off beach parking areas. We've Harvard, Harvard approach is a big mess now because it's been taken over by businesses in the high school. And you all can do something about that. We've got uh, the resort is closed down now, so now would be a good time to serve notice to them. When they reopen, they need to have a plan for managing their parking. And it can be, it can happen. You can do it. Um, but those, those, there would be no expense to the city to do that. So be inspired. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Donald Cunningham. Donald Buchel Cunningham, my grandfather. I have a photograph of him hanging under his airplane here in 1922. And his love of flying. Uh, my father was instrumental in bringing him to Riddle here. And um, uh, I spoke with you all before. Uh, a couple of years back about Embry Riddle taking on an elevated rail system that operates by electric power. And I think that it's important to, uh, and, uh, because of uh, the fact that we have a finite amount of petroleum. And um, uh, onwards from that, the last thing we need is more traffic lights downtown because it makes it a lot longer to get where you're going and increases road rage, you know, because you can't fight the clock, you know, when you're driving somewhere, you have to be careful. And uh, so Bob Rocket and uh, his head of security uh, called me on the phone and demanded that I meet them for coffee and kept the receipt and went back to Andrew Riddle and told Tom Connolly that, well, we met with him and we put him in his place, all right. And right there, I was saying, we need the Crusader uh, weapon system. And now in uh, the Ukraine is exactly what we need, not Abrams tanks, because that terrain is not compatible with the Abrams tanks. It's changing the subject. But uh, anyway, uh, I have a letter after uh, I moved to this property at 19 North Young Street. And uh, uh, Bill Linger was the manager. And I signed a lease, which remained out in the open in his living room for two years. But I was only about to see him a couple of years later. And I said, you know, why is this thing laying here? Why haven't you copied it yet? Well, it's four dollars wrong. Then they tried to get me. And that's, I spoke with uh, uh, Bill Sr. about a case that was filed against me that listed a lease. And there's no lease. Uh, anyway, uh, I told George Pappas, who I ran into at the bank, uh, explained to him that there was no lease. I said, you know, I was there. And then they tried to get me. What happened next is even more damning because they tried to get me while the power was switched off. However, I was cased and knew it. So I got a phone that would work when the power was switched off and called 911. And the police, that's when Bob Grimm was working here. Thank you, Donald. And uh, next up is Sandra Lawson. Sandra? I didn't give her three minutes. You did. <laughs> you did. I'll be here Sa next time. Thank you. Yep. Nice to see you. Sandra? Sandra's with the Small Business Administration? Yes, sir. All right. Sandra Lawson, Small Business Administration, Office of Disaster Assistance. Although we did get a name change just last week, it's now the Office of Recovery and Resilience. So I uh, thank you for allowing me to 
make this comment. I just wanted to let you know uh, we're here in Florida working Hurricane Ian and Hurricane Nicole disaster efforts. And Volusia County, as of close of business on uh, the 5th, uh, the total uh, disaster loan dollars approved in Florida uh, is $1.6 billion for Hurricane Ian. And for Hurricane Nicole, the total for Florida is $4.4 .4 million. And for, for Lucia County, Hurricane Ian total is $97.6 million. And for Hurricane Nicole in Volusia County, $2.2 million. And I just wanted to let you know that the disaster loans are being approved and funds are being dispersed. We still have opportunities available in the way of physical uh, damage uh, loans for Hurricane Nicole. The deadline for that is coming up on Monday, February 13th. So if people haven't applied, they can. And if there's some reason that uh, they can't make that deadline, there is a 15-day grace period. But you have to have a good reason for that application to be accepted. So sometimes things happen, so you have a little wiggle room. Also, if small businesses and private nonprofits suffered economically, no physical damage, but just lost business because of the storms, hurricanes, uh, there's what we call the economic injury disaster loan, and you have until September 13th to apply for that. Paperwork for businesses can be a little bit more complex, but uh, we have Business Recovery Center open in um, Daytona Beach uh, there at the Regional Library and we also have uh, FEMA's Disaster Recovery Center where FEMA's there, SBA is there and some other agencies uh, over at the health uh, unit, health department in, in uh, Daytona Beach. So we encourage you to apply. For those who may borrow money and are approved for the physical damage loan, there is an opportunity under Hurricane Ian and Nicole for mitigation assistance. So that means if if you're going to build back, you can build back better. So if you borrow money for physical damages, you can get an increase on your loan for mitigation purposes. It could be 20% of your total verified losses. And so in most cases, that's more than the physical damage loan itself. So that gives you an opportunity to use that money. Thank you, Sandra. All right. And we appreciate all you do. You're a quiet but very important part of the recovery. So, And I know our communications director was typing fever feverishly as you spoke, and she's going to post a lot of that information. So, Thank you. We appreciate you. Yep. Next is Dora Lewis. because I have to. The reason why I take pauses in my speech because I can. I came here to help you years ago. Understand what I said? I got here before all the hurricanes started to hit. I never got one cent from FEMA. Trying to get money from them is like dying. Did you hear me? Am I being aggressive? You know how long I've been here? No. 
I don't. Because I didn't tell you. I shut it up. My name is Doyle W. Lewis. And tonight I'm in Orange Beach, Florida. I hope you understand. Because if you don't, you're not going to help. I hope you understand, because you need to. I'm a master carpenter, I'm a master builder. My bicycle got stolen. That was my transportation on Wednesday. Cop said, so what? We can't do nothing about it. My hat got stolen on Friday night. I didn't report that one. Y'all need more police officers around this area. I guarantee you that one. My taxes that I paid didn't pay for my safety. God bless you, and go home tonight and sleep well. Thank you, Doyle. And last but not least is Doug Thomas. Doug Thomas, 132 River Bluff Drive. Um, later this year will be my 50th year of living in Foreman Beach. And uh, I'm very proud of this city. I've seen it grow, uh, and probably 99% of its growth has been wonderful. I believe that now is the time we have been dealing with the EOC for years. We have, we have the people. I would like to see this commission get this job done. I would like to see you fund a project to do a study for the location and the design of an EOC. Uh, most most towns I know have them, we don't. And I think now is the, with the political climate, now is the time that we can ask for help and get it done. We have some homegrown uh, muscle here that I think that we can ask to help us. The other thing that I would like to see done is a community center. This town deserves a community center. We have no place other than the pack in order to gather people around and, and socialize and have meetings that of a sizable amount of people. Uh, I promised you I would not take much time. I'm very direct, and I believe that this city commission needs to get this done, and we need to do it now. We've been putting it off for a long time. <clears throat> Our police station is, well, I couldn't even put shutters on that station because it wouldn't support the hurricane center. Um, so there's there's things that have to be done and we need to do it. So that's what I had to say. Now, as a proud grandfather, I will tell you that today my grandson, the goalie for Seabreeze High School, signed a scholarship commitment to West Liberty University in West Virginia. Awesome. So I will be at my home during soccer season in Western Pennsylvania because it's only a two hour and a half hour drive to there. So I just want to all of you know my love for baseball and God does have a sense of humor because he gave me an all-star soccer player. Thank awesome. you. <laughs> Thank you, Doug. And uh, so that wraps up audience remarks. I want to recognize the Boy Scouts and uh, Wendy Mara is their leader that brought them here tonight. What troop are you? So, perfect. So it's Troop 403. If you guys would all stand up. Congratulations. You guys can have a seat. They're working on their communications badge, and I told them, uh, you know, audience comments is kind of like 
a box of chocolates. You never know exactly what you're going to get. It's wide open, and I think you saw that tonight. There was uh, beach parking. There was uh, somebody had their bike stolen. Uh, there's some issues with motorbikes in the neighborhood that one resident's experiencing. Um, so you never know exactly what it's going to be, but hopefully you got a, a good feel for that. And, and thank you all for being here, and thank you, parents, for for uh, bringing them. All right. Uh, we're going to move along now to the approval of the minutes. The minutes of the January 24th, 2023 meeting have been sent to the Commission for Review, also posted to the City's websites. Commission, any additions, deletions, or corrections? Mr. Mayor, do approval. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign, and we'll show those passing unanimously. Uh, next up is the consent agenda, and does anyone wish to pull any item off of the consent agenda? Commissioner Persis. Yes, I'd like to pull item 6D. All right. Anyone else? Just need a motion to approve absent item 6D. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Please call the roll. Commissioner Sargent. Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Riley? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. 6D. Disposition yes. item titled Letter to Volusia County in Support of a Dog Friendly Beach Area. Thank you. And we'll start with City Manager Shanahan. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we have uh, a revised version of the text that we would like to include. Um, oh, I guess I should we have a revised version of the text that we would like to include. It's slightly different than what was in your packet. So um, if you like that, or if not, then we'll do whatever the commission desires. I have a couple suggested edits, and of course we can hear from the commission as well, but uh, I would like it to read the first paragraph. On behalf of the Ormond Beach City Commission, this letter is submitted in general support of designating a northern area of Volusia County beaches as dog friendly. And then in the uh, second paragraph, the only change would be on the second line, instead of designated, you would insert considered, and it would read it as the commission's suggestion that an area near the Michael Crotty Bicentennial Park be considered as a dog friendly beach and then it continues uh, the rest of the letter as written. I just thought that made it sound a little more uh, polite in that we were suggesting these things and asking for their consideration on these things. Not, I didn't think it was our place to tell them, uh, since they control the beach, where where it should be. And Commission, does anyone have any issues with that? No, I, I agree. agree. I agree, too. Just need a motion to approve. I move approval of Mayor Partington's um, edits on the letter. Second. Moved and seconded. Any other discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Sargent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Briley. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. And thank you. Uh, does any commissioner wish to comment on any other consent agenda items? If not, we will uh, move to the public hearing docket. Uh, I'll open the public hearings and commission, similar to last meeting, we're in a situation where continuance has been requested on 7, D, and E. And uh, so rather than have anybody who might be here from that item uh, sit through all of the other public hearings and then get to that, uh, is, does anyone wish to make that motion to continue? If you would, um, I think I would suggest including in your motion that it be continued until further notice and that the applicant would be required to uh, provide proper legal notice uh, when it does come back to us. And then city staff, I think, would also 
concurrent with that notify any of the residents uh, that are on their notification lists so that so that everybody would have proper notice is that does that work randy if that's included in the motion yes sir we, we can work. okay is there anyone who wishes to make that motion mr mayor i'll make that motion that we continue uh, items 7d and 7e uh and the uh, the applicant with to a uh, undetermined time the applicant will be required to submit proper uh, notification of the upcoming public hearings at that time second moved and seconded um this is a procedural matter um like i said similar to the last meeting the request for continuance has been made minor i don't know any of the details but my understanding is they're still working on uh certain matters i can ask mr watts if you wanted to come up and just give us a brief explanation Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the Commission, for the record, uh, Mark Watts with the law firm of Cobb Cole, 231 North Woodland Boulevard, DeLand. And, and I, I appreciate you taking this uh, this up and, and working with us on the continuance request again. Um, as we mentioned at the, at the last meeting, we've been working with some of the residents in Indian Springs on some revised uh, revisions to the, to the overall plan for this particular project. Um, we haven't had time to both get those revisions done and sit down with the neighborhood to go through them to make sure that it's addressed the concerns that that we listed at our last meeting with that group. So I think this will give us time, particularly with the open-ended nature of the continuance. Our intent will be to, to resubmit back to your staff. And if they see that everything is there and it's acceptable, we'd probably be back at your first meeting in March. But this gives us the opportunity to, to kind of set that time as we get everything in and get get the, hopefully the consensus around the neighborhood. So we appreciate your uh, uh, consideration of that, that request. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Watts? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. And we will go to 7A. I'll ask the clerk to read 7A by title only. Ordinance number 2023-08, an ordinance amending the future land use element of the comprehensive plan of the City of Woman Beach by amending the future land use map to change the designation of one parcel of real property totaling 0 0.30 plus or minus acres located at 101 Fiesta Drive. Volusia County parcel number 4220-01-00-0450 from low density residential to residential office retail, providing for a map annotation that limits the floor area ratio to zero and the residential units allowed to zero, providing for conflict, authorizing transmittal, and setting forth an effective date. This is the second reading of ordinance number 2023-08, read by title only. Thank you, and uh, I will ask Paul Holub on behalf of the applicant to speak on this item. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the commission. My name is Paul Holub. My office is at, a, at 1185 West Granada Boulevard. Uh, since the last meeting, I just wanted to um, update the commission and ask uh, that you include some of these uh, details if you choose to support um, our application. Uh, it's okay. One of the items was uh, the, the wall versus a fence. Um, and I know that uh, Commissioner Briley had met with uh, some of the residents and um, I spoke to him and, and got back with John Hanlon who owns the building. And um, so what we have proposed, um, where we think we now meet what the, the neighbors are looking for is um, a fence, a vinyl fence at the, um, west end of the property because there's not enough room there to put a masonry precast and then the, the balance that is in uh, pink would be a six foot precast masonry wall in lieu of a uh, vinyl fence 
and along the entrance to uh, Fiesta Heights, we were able to um, locate a manufacturer that does make a, a precast masonry um, brick wall. Uh, so we've heard that the neighbors did not want a six foot wall along the entrance. Uh, so we are able to tie into their, the brick element at their entry um, with a comes in a 42 inch precast masonry brick uh, wall and then there'll be columns that are slightly larger than that and that will tie in with um, their entry feature um, along Fiesta Heights and the yellow is where their existing ent uh, entry feature is. Uh, so we've made those changes. We have um, disconnected some of the lights that were uh, impacting the residents uh, since the last meeting and uh, you know, John has agreed, of course, with the parking lot, the new parking lot area, to run the lights from dusk to nine, nine in the evening. Uh, they won't run all night. And of course, when he builds that, they'll have light guards per your code. Uh, the only outstanding item uh, that I don't think was clarified was the sidewalk along um, uh, the Fiesta Heights right away. There's uh, no way in our, we've looked at it, we've shot the grades, there's just no way to extend that sidewalk to Granada and make it uh, comply with handicap code. So we would ask uh, if the commission does spur application that they will clarify that when this parking lot's built and landscaped and so on, uh, that extending the sidewalk to Granada would not be a requirement. And, Available for any questions you may have. Any questions for Mr. Holub? Thank you. Next, I have uh, Terry Wimpy. Uh, Terry Wimpy, 102 Quadro Place. Yes, sir. And uh, I guess Mr. Paul kind of answered a few of my questions. Uh, I didn't understand why the uh, wall couldn't go at least the three quarters away across the back of our properties. If I understand this right, he just said that that will be a masonry wall. And the only thing I ask is when you do it, uh, make sure uh, it's not sitting on my sprinkler. Uh, the last fence went in, and uh, you know I'm not I'm not saying they're even in the right place, but just a chance to move things and. Uh, no, if, if this is, that was the only reason I'd say tonight. I just did not understand why we were going to be saddled with a uh, white vinyl facing north. And uh, that it, if it gets no sunlight, it's just a maintenance nightmare. So, thank you. Thank you. Next, I have Tony, is it Nurder? Good evening, I'm Tony Norder. I live at Long Fork Quadro Place. I appreciate the opportunity to discuss this new matter of the property fence that separates the from the existing office building behind me. I'm hoping you will understand my concerns and we can work toward a solution that benefits both parties as well as the surrounding properties. I'd like to start by addressing the fence design, whether plastic is a better option than wood. I'm concerned it will not hold up well over time for several reasons. One plastic tends to get mold, mildew growth on the north side, requiring cleaning and maintenance that at my age is not viable. Two, after storms, I typically see the plastic style fence is blown out. As eight foot, I see this as a potential wind sail behind my home. This is an extreme event with its own vinyl slats flying into my home, which makes me very nervous. Also, once the storm has passed, who will be responsible for making the necessary repairs and securing my property? Lastly, vinyl fencing may be bright and very reflective at times at certain times of the day. Eight foot tall will cause a huge glare. A wall that enhances the beauty and values of all the property, especially the Hamlet Associates building, and its appearance from the Ronald Boulevard. 
Over the years, the law will be less maintenance and repairs from storms. Very importantly, it will retain its beauty. Plastic fence over time starts to look shabby and run down. We want to enhance the entire new project, not just your show area. You will have the equipment, manpower, and for the parking lot, now is the time to complete your project. I ask that the handling ownership and city staff approving this project. Please take into consideration the parking lot as a permanent improvement, the separation between commercial property, residential neighborhood, should be constructed out of permanent materials. It is in everybody's best interest to complete the project right this time. Thank you. Thank you. Paul, did you want to add anything? Yes, Mr. Mayor, the, uh, the white vinyl fence that's proposed for the west, uh, it's about 85 feet or so. That's all we can fit in there, but it is a commercial grade six foot vinyl fence. It is not something that we buy at you know, the local Lowe's or Home Depot. But we literally have between the, the existing curb and the property line about 12 inches. The precast walls take a uh, auger that's about 24 inches wide and uh, goes about two foot deep for the precast masonry because of the weight for the wind load. We just can't fit in there. But if you look at the area or you look at the that particular line, the, the, the office building adjacent to us to the west already has a six foot white vinyl fence that also continues on that one particular lot. Uh, so we've done what we could to accommodate that that section is just not um, wide enough to put anything else in there other than a commercial grade uh, vinyl fence. And certainly, Mr. Hamlin is the property owner would be responsible for maintaining it, if it's damaged, repair it, and so on. Um, and uh, as far as the, uh, the previous speaker earlier about sprinklers and so on, yes, we'll, we'll do locates and things like that before we get out there and, and um, install. And these uh, precast walls and fence, this would all be done um, just uh, for clarification. When he does the parking lot construction, he would do it all at once. And we can certainly get with the neighborhood and show them the proposed uh, brick pattern, and we can get it very close to what they have at their entrance, and also we can share with them the, the type of precast wall for the rest of the property. Um, it, it'll be color similar to the building that's there uh, for the rear property line, uh, but there's different options and we can share those with them. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Holub? All right. Uh, just need a motion and a second. I move approval of ordinance number 2023-08. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion, Mr. Mayor? I just want to put on the record that I did meet with Mr. Wimpy and Ms. Miller and uh, Ms. Rose uh, Friday over on the site, and uh, they relay their concerns to me. I uh, subsequent to that meeting, I, I spoke to Mr. Hollum and. Um, I think Mr. Hollum had the opportunity to speak with Mr. Hamill. I heard back yesterday from Mr. Hollum, he touched base. And uh, I think this is probably as close as we can get as far as the masonry wall. There's still going to be a little bit of area where there's the, the vinyl fence. One thing I was going to ask Paul, I don't know if it's possible or not, um, the, the portion of the vinyl fence that's there, and I'm sorry, I should have asked you while you're up here. Um, could it possibly be like a decorative stone appearance just so it kind of blends instead of like a bright white fence? And the only reason I think about that is I, it's, that, it's that one, I think the property at 106 Quadro is where the vinyl will be. And because I don't think the white fence to the west is in her backyard. So I think it would just kind of maybe just kind of blend into what the, the stucco wall or the masonry wall. A, a true precast masonry uh, wall or fence um, requires the larger footers. They do make a 
um, a plastic fence that they do the in, they do the same type of look, but they're they're not very durable. Um, they're not a commercial grade. Yeah, they sell those locally, and um, I don't okay. think anybody would be pleased with those. And, and uh, they just don't have the wind load and that type. Uh, maybe there's something we can do on her side of the white vinyl fence to put some plants in. Or something okay. on her side. It was just it was just a thought. We can go look at it and, and uh, sit down and see if there's some uh, alternative. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion? Please call the vote. Ms. Commissioner. Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I just want to remind everybody, this: the item before you is a land use map change designation. It is not a site plan change. So we can offer recommendations to the SBRC that will review and approve the, the features of the site plan. We've incorporated some of those into uh, the ordinance here. So if you want to modify that, then we can, we can incorporate that as well. I just wanted to remind you about that. Thank you. OK. I don't think staff's got that direction, if I'm mistaken. Are you comfortable with that, uh, Randy and Stephen, or do you need an amended motion to? That's, I'm good with that, so. Okay. Good deal. Please call the vote. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. 7B. Ordinance number 2023-11, an ordinance authorizing the execution and issuance of a first amended development order regarding Ormond Central Plan Business Development by approving and authorizing a planned business development to be known as Ormond Central Unit 1 Self Storage, located at 1 South Old Kings Road, Volusia County, parcel number 4241-01-09-0180-760 West Granada Boulevard, Volusia County, parcel number 4241-01-09-0170, no address, South Old Kings Road, Volusia County, parcel number 4241-01-11-0130 and no address West Granada Boulevard, Volusia County, parcel number 4241-01-11-0120. Authorizing a three-story indoor self-storage use with a building of 106,140 square feet and associated site improvements as an allowed use within the Ormond Central property and by amending the allowed floor area ratio FAR from 55,000 square feet to 131,140 square feet for the entire Ormond Central property under certain conditions, establishing conditions and expirations of approval, and setting forth an effective date. This is the second reading of ordinance number 2023-11 read by title only. Thank you. And the only card I have is from the applicant who is available uh, for questions. Commission, any questions? This is second reading. We covered this pretty well at the last meeting. We just need a motion and a second. We have approval of ordinance number 2023-11. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? I would just say the landscape plan on this looks fantastic. <laughs> Agreed. Please call the vote. Commissioner Sargent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Briley. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. 7C. Ordinance number 2023-12, an ordinance authorizing the execution and issuance of a first amended development order for the Store It North Ormond Plan Business Development located at 1405 North U.S. Highway 1, Volusia County Property Appraiser Parcel Number 3136-01-45-0010. Authorizing a three-story indoor self-storage use with a building of 125,534 square feet and associated site improvements as an allowed use within the Store It North Ormond Plan business development under certain conditions. Establishing conditions and expirations of approval and setting forth an effective date. This is the second reading of Ordinance Number 2023-12, read by title only. Thank you. And Again, I have a card from the applicant who's available for questions. Is there a motion in the second? Mr. Chair, I'm, Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to approve PBD 2022-096. Second. 
Who's been seconded? Any discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. 7D and E were previously continued, and so we move now to 7F. Ordinance number 2023-13, an ordinance amending paragraph C, official zoning map of section 2-01, established of article 1, establishment of zoning districts and official zoning map of chapter 2, district and general regulations of the city of Ormond Beach land development code, by amending the official zoning map to rezone two parcels of real property totaling approximately 13.13 acres, generally located south of the platted road of Pennsylvania Avenue and along the platted roadways of Rosemary Street and Benton Street, west of Plantation Oaks Boulevard, Volusia County Property Appraiser Parcel Identification Numbers 3136-01-08-0010 and 3136-01-09-0001 from B-7 Highway Tourist Commercial to R-4 Single Family Cluster and Town House Authorizing Revision of Official Zoning Map Repealing All Inconsistent Ordinances or Parts There of and setting forth an effective date. This is the first reading of ordinance number 2023-13 read by title only. Thank you and I'll ask our planning director Steven Spraker to speak on this item. Good evening Steven Spraker, planning director. This is a request for a zoning map amendment. Um, the property is located abutting I-95. Plantation Oaks Boulevard would be located here. At the last commission meeting, there was a land use change from low intensity commercial to medium density residential. The purpose of this amendment is to change the zoning to be consistent with the land use. The zoning uh, map amendment seeks to go from a commercial zoning district to an R4 single family cluster and townhouse. The planning board rec reviewed this, this project, recommended approval with a 5 to 0 vote. Staff is also recommending recommend approval. I believe the applicant is here. Are there any questions? Great. Thank you, Stephen. Any questions for Stephen? Appreciate it. I do have a card from Glenn Storch, who's here. If anybody has any questions, I don't know if I see Glenn still. But okay. Um, we just need a motion and a second. Move approval. Second. Any discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Briley. Yes. Commissioner Sargent. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes, and we will close the public hearings. And now we are at 8A. Ordinance number 2023-14, an ordinance amending se section 2-221, Leisure Services Advisory Board of Article 6, Boards, Commissions, Committees, and other agencies of Chapter 2, Administration of the Code of Ordinances by amending the composition of the board, providing terms and conditions, and setting forth an effective date. This is the first reading of Ordinance Number 2023-14, read by title only. Thank you. I don't have any cards on 8A. Um, before we do a motion, I just wanted to point out we've had, I guess, some issues getting a quorum because this board is so big uh, in comparison to a lot of our other boards. And so I asked uh, both the city manager and the city attorney if they could come up with some ideas on how we could correct that so that this group's required to meet every other month, I believe. Um, they've had difficulty getting a quorum and so I don't know, uh, one of the ideas I had heard was reducing it to five members like many of our other boards and then having alternates. I don't know if that will work or if that, if this uh, proposed ordinance encompasses that or not. But uh, I guess the question I have, Randy, is are the alternates still able to participate and vote fully even though they're not needed to be included in the
count quorum count for quorum purposes. Right. So there, excuse me, there are some options. Um, one option would be to reduce the current uh, composition from 13 members to seven members. And, um, you know, each member of the commission and the mayor could um, appoint one member. Uh, and then the other two uh, appointments could be at-large members by the commission, with those two members being um, selected from people among the four groups. And uh, they, they would be regular members. So there would be two members from four of the organizations serving as regular members that could vote. And then we could, we could have two alternate members from the other two boards, um, we kind of put them on a rotational basis, if you will. So like every two years with the election, then we could, uh, we could have members from the two boards that are serving as alternates and the two boards that are serving as regular members, they could have members that serve as, um, as, as alternates. So that would work. And then that way the composition at seven would have um, at least two members of the, of, of the organizational boards. Um, and into alternates. Mr. Mayor. Just, Mayor. Uh, just, just a quick question. Has this been like a, an, an ongoing problem in the past or did it just kind of start this year? Um, With this particular board? I think they've had ongoing quorum <clears throat> problems. Uh, not to the extent that they've had this year, uh, but they have had ongoing problems. I would say that um, with the city attorney's uh, suggestion, that doesn't mean that they still can't participate and attend those meetings, anybody that's not part of those four uh, organizational groups. So uh, if you need any more detail than that, I can call Robert up. No, I think, I think that explains it. Deputy Mayor, does that help you? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Um, I mean, they're not coming now in most instances. But if they have something they want to talk about, I think they show up. Mm -hmm. And so it would still be that same situation. I don't think we're excluding anybody, but we're creating a system where it can function and they're not having to cancel meeting after meeting because they can't get an official quorum together. Um, I had asked Randy if we could change the definition of a quorum, um, but actually I think this a solution or option makes a lot more sense and so thank you Randy for coming up with that if the rest of the Commission agrees now um, that would need to be an amendment to the ordinance or yeah, it's a it's a pretty substantial rewrite so since this is a staff initiated item uh, I would recommend that staff just pull it off the agenda uh, I'll rework it and bring it back for you as a new ordinance on on first reading um, the question is whether you want uh, five regular members with two or four alternates or whether you want seven regular members with two alternates I like the idea of seven with two alternates, Robert needs, or Joyce, does that solve most of the problems? Okay, I think it, I think it would. So if the commission's okay with that. Robert's nodding his head, yes. Great. Just for clarification, that's seven total with two alternates, is that correct? Correct. So it would be five and two. <clears throat> correct. Yes, so the, the, la the, the last two will be um, at large appointments from two of the four boards, and then we'll do the two up to the two other boards uh, as alternates, and then we'll do that on a rotational basis every couple of years, so they can kind of change their role. So that may that may keep everybody happy. So. All right. Hey, commission, anybody object to staff pulling eight A? No. no. For a yeah. right, bring them back to us at an, at another time. Very good. Thank you. And uh, next up is reports, suggestions, and requests. And we'll start with City Manager Joyce Shanahan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, staff would like to thank the Commission for their work at the Strategic Planning Workshop. Um, we had a meeting the next day to outline the um, projects that you had identified and uh, put a project team together so we can ensure that they get accomplished. 
I want to make sure that you realize that everything that you all talked about goes on one list or another. And so some are on another list, but then we're not going to lose anything that you talked about. And sometimes there's low-hanging fruit that we can accomplish that doesn't really cost staff time or money that we can check those off the list. So I don't want you to walk away feeling like you weren't heard because we clearly did hear you and we want to be sure that we incorporate all that. So we'll be bringing that back to you probably at the second meeting in March um, for your adoption. And today you also reviewed the stormwater master plan. That's a big step in the right direction. I think we were ahead of the curve on um, much like you were in 2009 when um, you charged staff with a uh, direction to bring back a plan for the flooding that occurred over the Central Park area. And so that master plan is now being readopted by you. We will uh, we had a workshop on that tonight, and we'll bring that back for consideration for just the document itself. And then during the budget workshops, we will outline projects and funding for those projects. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions if you have anything for me tonight. Any questions for City Manager Shanahan? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Assistant City Manager Claire Whitley. Comments. Have a wonderful night. Thank you, Claire. And City Attorney Randy Hayes. No, sir. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Randy. And tonight we start with Commissioner, Commissioner Sargent. All right. I can talk. Uh, first, last Friday night, my family and I attended the free family art night at the Ormond Art Museum. I encourage any, anyone that has young kids to attend those. They're, they're well attended, get there early. They're normally from 5.30 to 7. Uh, great family event. Uh, we also attended the First Step Shelter this past Saturday. I believe the event raised over $240,000. And just some facts on the First Step Shelter in case people don't understand. Um, since day one, it's impacted um, 736 people have been sheltered, 180 people have been employed, um, 158,000 meals served. It's the city, I believe we contribute about, what, $80,000? And clearly the money's being well used. Um, on a different note, at the shelter, I ran into Senator Wright and was talking to him just about what we could do more for our first responders um, than maybe what we are doing now. But I came across an article on officers.com called Power of the Dog, Emotional Support Dogs in Law Enforcement. And um, this is being done around the, the U.S. This one, um, station dogs in the future, canines for warriors um, is, is behind this. And just to few things out of this article. It says, ultimately, they would love to have a dog in each department in the U.S. Um, that is not going to happen, but I think more we move into 2022, 23, and 24, I think we're going to see more of it. It is going to become more socially acceptable. I think departments are going to become more progressive in taking care of their people. And I think it's another um, route to ensure that your people are well taken care of and we'll start to see more of it. So just wanted to throw that out there. I don't know if the chief is or the chiefs have looked into this, but we're already working on that. You'll be happy to know for the police department. So we're a step just ahead like of you. The website, change. it's uh, I love the updates. Thank you. And with that, I, that's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Persis. Good evening, everyone. I just have a couple of items I'd like to share. Um, I wanted to uh, let you know that last week I went to Pathways Elementary School and I was asked to judge the social studies fair. And this is um, where fourth grade students, they all do a social studies fair. And the quality of those uh, projects were absolutely amazing. Um, I just want to let you know, our, our schools here, right here in Long Beach, are fabulous, and they really do a great job educating our kids. I was proud to do that, um, really on behalf of the city. Uh, I also attended the First Step Shelter, and I loved hearing some of the stories about how you know, people's lives were turned around. You know, someone that I, I think Sheriff Chitwood helped that, you know, 
I mean, he committed robbery and went to prison, and yet he's turned his life around, so it's never too late for someone, and it's wonderful to hear those kind of stories. Um, also, um, I just wanted everyone to um, keep in mind uh, what's happening in Turkey and Syria with that terrible, terrible earthquake that occurred. Oh, I think 5,000, over 5,500 people have been killed. There's probably going to be more. Um, just wanted to ask to keep them in our prayers. I know they're going through a terrible time. And let's see. I think that's all I have tonight. I appreciate everyone being here. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Commissioner. And Deputy Mayor Briley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I will just echo the sentiments of Commissioner Sargent, Commissioner Persis. Uh, sometimes when you go next to last, they kind of steal your thunder on the, on the first step <laughs> shelter gala. But what a great event and, and the good work they do. Um, there was a lot of great testimony from people uh, how the, the, the shelters really helped them and been an impact on their lives. Um, one thing I'm, I'm uh, anxious to see is, uh, eager to see is, you know, the, uh, I think uh, last commission meeting, or I believe it was last commission meeting, when former Commissioner Selby came before us with the, the panhandling signs, and, and I know the city they told me has adopted adopted those. Uh, I think we uh, have kind of unofficially given the go ahead that we kind of like to adopt those as well and uh, see where we can get those posted around the city. Um, and then my only other thing tonight, uh, and I think this might be a question for Joyce, I did get a phone call again today, um, if there's just any update on the South Beach Street sidewalks. So, um, Sean, oh, do you want to speak to that, Sean? I'm always confused, Sean, if it's, if it's county sidewalk or city sidewalk. That's a problem. <laughs> I, I guess they're the county saying the stars. Okay. We were all confused about the South Beach Spring sidewalks. Um, we reached out to, to Volusia County. We're going to continue to reach out to them. Um, we're identifying some, some options. What we'd like to do, I think, is what we're going to propose is get them to make the repairs to the seawall, and then we will we'll follow up with the sidewalk, and that, that's what we're looking to do. But we haven't finished up, finalized all those details with the county yet. But as soon as we do, we'll. I've also had a personal discussion with uh, County Manager Rechtenwald. That's what we did in the last hurricane, where the county repaired the seawall which has to happen first before right. they put the sidewalk there so and I asked him if he was amenable to that same program that we did we need to get easements from the property mm -hmm. owners so Ann Margaret already did that last time so all those pieces are working together to take some time to get that fantastic I appreciate the update that's all I have this evening Mr. Mayor thank you thank you and uh, let's see coming up on February 15th the Riverbend Nature Park we're having the Penland property ribbon cutting. Looking forward to that. It's at 4.30 in the afternoon. That's a great partnership between the St. John's River Water Management District, Volusia County, and the city of Ormond Beach uh, that's going to expand our, our nature park there. Um, a Taste of Ormond is coming up on March 5th, always an incredible event. Uh, so well loved by our residents and uh, Ormond Main Street does an amazing job putting that on every year so I just wanted to mention that and uh, Commission during our strategic planning a couple of the top items were the emergency operations center and also a west side community center uh, I'd like for the Commission to for a motion to give the city manager direction to uh, set up, have our lobbyist in Tallahassee set up a meeting with Speaker Renner and Representative Leak uh, for myself, whoever from staff and, uh, and those gentlemen in order to facilitate a request for this year for funding for design and then for the next legislative year for construction on those two items. I feel like we're in a unique position having the Speaker of the House uh, represent our area, part of our legislative delegation, and then also the budget chairman as well. And if, if we don't ask now, we may never have a chance to ask for that in the future. If we can get that set up in the next couple weeks, if the commission directs 
our city manager to accomplish that, then I think it sets the commission up well for later during the session when the commission is going to be in Tallahassee having their individual meetings with the legislators to also uh, lobby for these items. And um, I think it's something that's doable, but I think the city manager needs that direction from the commission in the form of a, a formal motion. And Mr. Mayor, I'll, Mr. Mayor, I'll make that motion. Second. Moved and seconded. Second. Any other discussion? Joyce, anything else you need included in that? All right. Uh, yes, sir. Susan, Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Commissioner Sargent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Riley. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. Thank you for that. And uh, with that, there being nothing else to come before the commission, uh, it's almost 8.15. I'm so proud of these Boy Scouts for sticking through <laughs> an entire meeting. Congratulations to you guys. So. Well done. And we are adjourned. Thank you.